first thing that should be noted is that according to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud رضي الله تعالى عنه, this Surah Al Duha and Surah Al Insha are one Surah; they are not two Surahs. He used to recite both these Surahs in one half the prayer, without in between reciting Aya Bismillah. But they are two Surahs; there is no doubt consensus of all the other companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Is that they are different surahs, and I suppose that to make them appear so that you know that thing is fulfilled, that the surahs of Quran are mostly in pairs, so it has been divided. Otherwise, the style is the same. Alam yajid ka yatiman faawa, wa wajada ka dalan fahda, wa wajada ka ayr. Alam nashrah le ka sabrat, wa wabana an ka mizrat. Allah zee an ka na zahrat. The same style. The same, you know, conversation you may say, or communication between Allah and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at a very, very, very personal level, secretly. And what I said before about Surah Al-Duha, it's more important regarding Surah Al-Insha'a that this surah could not be understood except by the those mufassirin, the art interpreters and exegetes. But they have a mystic orientation, spiritual and mystic. Because alam nashrah la ka sabra, have we not expanded or opened up for you your chest? To abawana an ka vizrat, and we remove from you that heavy burden. Allazi an ka dawarak, which was nearly breaking your back. وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ سِكْرَكَ And we have exalted for you your renown and fame. فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْوُسْرِ يُسْرًا إِنَّ مَعَ الْوُسْرِ يُسْرًا So, always, along with hardship is ease. And again, surely, along with hardship is ease. فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَنْصَبْ So, when you have accomplished your task, the mission assigned to you, فَنْصَبْ then exert yourself fully. By la Rabbi ka farhab, and let your towards your Lord be your entire quest. Now this is known that this is from among the very early Makki surahs, and the conditions for the Prophet and the companions of the Prophet were very hard. They had to struggle hard at that time. Where was the ease? Had this surah been revealed in Medina, it would have meant something else. Those hard times are gone. Now the things are very easy for you, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No, very early Makkah surahs. So what does it mean? What was ease to him? What was the meaning of the expanding of his chest? What was the meaning that he was relieved of the burden that was nearly going to break his back? Now let me quote here. But I am giving you, and I agree with you, that is from Qazi Sanaullah Pani Pati Rahmatullahi Alayh, one of the mystic mufassirin of Indian subcontinent of the last century. He says, actually, for a prophet or a saint, the most lovable thing is that he should keep solely, exclusively attentive to his Lord. Why to discharge the duties as a messenger? You have to go out. You have to talk to the people. You want to keep yourself engaged in meditation with your Lord. Go home in your lonely place, praying to Him, talking to Him, conversing with Him. Let your soul have a direct communication with your Lord. This is the most enjoyable thing that a human being can ever imagine. 
بٹ ناؤ دی کمانڈ از گو ازا بلا فرا نو تگا گو ٹو فرا از ٹرانس بیسٹ ناؤ یو ہیو ٹو فیس بٹ دی بگسٹ پین دیٹ ہی از ہیونگ از دیٹ دیٹ کنڈیشن وچ ہی ہیڈ وین ہی واز ٹاکنگ ٹو اللہ سبان تعالی آن دی ماؤنٹ آف ٹور ہاؤ پلیزنٹ اٹ واس سو علامہ اقبال از کوٹڈ شیخ عبد القدوس آف گنگو ان از لیکچرس ون سی سیٹ محمد عربی بالا آسما رفت تو باز آمد بخبا خدا اگر من رفت میں باز نہ آمد میں محمد اف ریبیا ونٹ ٹو دی ہائیسٹ ہیون اینڈ دین کم کیم بیک بائی گاڈ اف آئی ہیڈ ری دیئر آئی ووڈ نیور ہیو کم بیک سو دس از دی ڈفرینس بٹوین دی مسٹک ایکسپیرینس اینڈ دی پروفیٹک ایکسپیرینس اے مسٹک اے سوفی وانٹس ٹو کیپ himself with his lord no interference this is the tendency which led to that monasticism this was an you know, unbalanced attitude that led to monasticism why why to marry have have all these you know problems hundred and thousand and one problems for you if you marry you have a family now you have to feed them care for them now the child is sick and now you have to get him uh, admitted to the school and uh, so on and so forth. Now you can't have that, you know, that school, tranquility of your mind. Baithe rahe tasavvure jana kiye boi. Keep sitting and have the thought of Allah in your mind and nothing else. So that was the pain actually which Muhammad was having, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, while he was asked to go out. Preach to the people. We are looking only to the outside pain that he was getting when he some said, Oh, you have gone crazy. Oh, you are a poet. Oh, you are a sorcerer or a magician. This was also hurting him. But that is not mentioned here. That, you know, his difficulties were going to more and more multiply in the coming years. But Alam Nashrah Laka Sadrak, that was painful to him was his occupation with this propagation of religion and not keeping himself alone in the loneliness. Plotinus has said very beautiful verse, very beautiful verse, flight of the alone to the alone. Within us we have something which is alone and that is our Ruh. Ruh is not son of someone and daughter of someone or brother of someone. No, Ruh has no connection with anybody here in this world. It's all alone. Whatever it is, it is by itself. So when one is sitting and contemplating and meditating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the flight, flight of the alone. The roof within me and you now comes out, goes up, 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 flight of the alone to the alone. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. He is the alone. Alam nashrah laka sadrak wa wadahna anka vizrak alladhi anqada zahrak wa rafana laka zikbars. As time progressed, Muhammad came to know how much is it is delightful for you. When even a single person accepts Islam and you feel, now this brother of mine is saved from the fire of hell. This is another delight. This delight now takes the place of that delight. The Sufi are used three terms for suluk. There is sair ilallah, one is going nearer, nearer, nearer to Allah. Then Sair Filla, now contemplating and meditating the person or the attributes of Allah. This is that position from which if you are asked to go away, then you feel pain, you feel hurt. But the third stage is Sair Anillah Ilallah. Now you are going away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to go down the Mount of Noor. 
where Muhammad received his first revelation in the cave of Hira, Jabal al-Nur. And Musa had to come down from Kohetur, the Mount of Tur. But then said, Alillah ilallah, but this is for Allah. So that more and more of his creatures, they are saved from the fire of hell. They turn towards Allah. This is the biggest delight, biggest delight, biggest delight. But you come to it to realize it, but you have to take some time for that. This Yusra has now come to you, but you had to pass that through that Yusra, that difficulty. You had to pass that, but now you feel it. The Prophet said to Ali, Ya Ali, La yahdi Allahu bika rajulan wahidan khairun laka bin humrin na'am. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes even a single human being towards the right path because of you, it is much more precious than so many red camels. That was the biggest, you know, wealth for the Arabs. Rajulan Wahidan, guidance will be given by Allah, but you have became, become instrumental in it. If Allah guides even one human being through you, through your effort, through your dawah, خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنْ خُمْرِ النَّعَمْ Red colored camels, a host of them, this is more precious than that. Now, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ This is for the future. When that time comes, يَا الْحَقُّ وَزَحَقَ الْبَاطِلِ When that time comes, then you'll be free. Then you attach yourself with us absolutely. And this is, you know, historically speaking in this era, the sermon that Muhammad gave Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one evening before he died. Came out from his hujra. And you know this Salah Prayer was in progress. Abu Bakr was leading the prayer. When he felt that the Prophet has come out, he tried to get back so that he comes forward to lead the prayer. But he said, no, no, you continue. Then he sat by his side. Now, sitting, in that sitting posture, he was the Imam of Abu Bakr, and Abu Bakr was the Imam for the rest of the congregation. That way that prayer was completed. Then he gave the sermon. Allah has given an option to a servant of his. If he likes this world, he can choose it. If he likes the other, he can choose it. And the servant has chosen the other one. Abu Bakr wept. And some of the people said, look to this old man. Why is he weeping? But Abu Bakr has understood that the Prophet has decided to go now. Because to every messenger Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives this option. Now from our side you are free. You have done your duty. If you want to come back, okay. If you want to still stay in the world, okay. We shall grant you further lease. And that is why the last words on the tongue of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa at the time of death, Allahumma fir rafiq al-ala. Now I choose rafiq al-ala, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I give up this world. 